Hello, good evening and welcome to a new episode of Arguably the Reading Quest. Now listen to these quotes. Uh, I shall always be a priest of love. If I were a moon, I know where I would fall down. He worked very hard till nothing lived in him but his eyes. Their words were only accidents in mutual silence. She turned and saw a great white moon looking at her over the hill and her breast opened to it. She was cleaved like a transparent jewel to its light. She stood filled with full moon offering herself. Her two breasts opened to make way for it. Her body opened wide like a quivering anemone. A soft, dilated invitation touched by the moon. In his dark eyes was a deep misery, which he wore with the same ease and pleasantness as he wore his close sitting clothes. So, I guess you must have guessed it right. So, the book I am going to talk about today is D.H. Lawrence, Rainbow. A beautiful love story uh, written to challenge the conventional Victorian morality that find it notoriously difficult to fit either in the modernist style of writing or in the conventional Victorian style of writing. I have given this quote so as uh, you can get a flavor of uh, you know what it means to read Lawrence. And I will again and again justify that why he is called as a priest of love. So if as Oscar Wilde says that when critics disagree the artist is in accord with himself then D.H. Lawrence must count as the most harmonious writer of all the times. In a decade after the Second World War Lawrence was regarded as a cultural hero, an intellectual up from the working class, a prophet against mechanized existence and a champion of instinctual life, as says Benjamin Kunkel in his biography The New Life of D.H. Lawrence. And Lawrence, as I said, never quite belonged amongst the modernists anyways, as James Joyce does. Impatient with their aestheticism, he declared that his concern was man alive, and there was none of T.S. Eliot's extension of personality about his work. For every line of Lawrence that you will read is brimming to four uh, uh, and filled with his prophetic sentimentality. His depictions of animals, especially and indeed of women, are amongst the most intimately sympathetic in English language. Lawrence's famous nature's description are always vivid, attentive and fairly pulsed with suppressed sexual feeling. He called his wife Frida the most wonderful woman in all England. Lawrence mailed perhaps the greatest of his letters to her. In one he declares, the real way of living is to answer to one's want. I am reading it verbatim. Pardon. Not that I want to light up with my intelligence as many things as possible, but for the living of my full flame. I want that liberty. I want that woman. I want that pound of peaches. I want to go to sleep. I want to go to pub and have a good time. I want to look a beastly swell today. I want to kiss that girl. I want to insult that man. Instead of that, we talk of some sort of ideas. I am like Carail who they say wrote 50 volumes on the value of silence. In the rainbow, of course, uh, Lawrence trades his great visual power for sensually intense and fumbling account of life of man and woman. So in Rainbow, if you see, Lawrence adopts an overall family saga and for this, the Lawrence, the, uh, uh, Lawrence Rainbow uh, craves comparison with M.L. Brown's Wuthering Height. This novel chronicles three generations of Brangwen family and as we see in the Rainbow, the character moves in a straight line of development from manual to semi-skill, from semi-skill to applied academics, from applied academics to professional, from professional to pure academics, from pure academics to artistic and creative form of liberal art. So when you have finished reading it for the first time and you try to think of the whole novel, you are likely to see nothing but large number of intense moments all in a long line. The story experience after experience after experience from beginning to the end. So it's a large number of intense moment okay, uh, 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 placed uh, chronologically as the novel progresses from beginning to the end. And the real story of Lawrence's novel lies at the level of emotions and pre-conscious impulse of character. So that the external event and much of the conversation 
seems less significant if not trivial. While the modernist writing style can be termed as stream of consciousness, Lawrence's writing can be described as streams of metaphors and emotions. So here I would also like to add if you are interested in creative writing, if you are interested in uh, how to use words, collocation in use, how to write uh, you know, intense uh, lyrical prose. So I believe Lawrence is one writer that you should follow. And that is why, I mean, uh, for the sheer reason that it can be categorically defined as streams of metaphors and emotions as against the stream of consciousness. Uh, radically different from any conventional narrative mode with a, with, a, with a certain possible exceptions from comparison to certain paragraphs of Emil Brown's Wuthering Height. The long and short of it is that Lauren's novels are a bible of vivid, complex, sensual human emotions that percolate beautifully within the breathtaking imagery of nature and he shall no wonder always remain the priest of love but it is far from 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 uh, from, from true that it was only lawrence during those years of the first world war who was attacking victorian morality by trying to locate sex uh, in, in, in its actual position in human life. Rather, there were many writers at work. For example, James Joyce's portrait of the artist as a young man uh, was one such book, uh, which I have already you know done an episode on. Uh, Bertrand and Rochelle's uh, The Conquest of Happiness, Marriage and Morals in Praise of Idleness is one such book. Aldo Huxley, Brave New World is, is one such book. Hermann Hesse writing in Germany, be it Siddhartha, be it Narcissus and Goldman, or be it Demian, also, you know, tried to attack Victorian morality and, and, and sexuality as a taboo in, in those uh, post-war and <coughs> pre-war years. So I believe, once again, I repeat, please enjoy reading Rainbow and, uh, and, 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 and please like, share and subscribe so that it can reach to more people. Thank you so much. Happy reading.